there and welcome back to the channel or if you're new hi thank you very much for coming along um, something a little bit different here we are doing a little bit of an experiment um, as you can probably guess from the title of the video from the thumbnail um, it is a case of how does a club rebuild when they've lost their squad so we're doing it with Manchester United at the minute I am the manager um, that will change that's not going to last it's going to be the shortest reign in history it's going to be for like 10 minutes um, what I've done is I have moved a lot of the players on um, as you can see this is our first team squad so we'll show you the, the players that we've moved on um, we've used the the in-game editor to move a load of players away and the, the idea is that I've seen a lot of experiments where it's like oh what if we give a non-league team all the money in the world and it's like well they become pretty good pretty quickly I imagine um, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to give the team a lot of money but get but do it by getting rid of all their players so that's what we've done with Man United reasons for choosing Man United got a lot of high profile players a lot of high value players one of the biggest clubs in the world I'd never actually do a save with Manchester United I don't think so it seemed like a good place to start and obviously it's a, it's a big club so it, it should make it fairly interesting so we we are using the winter update so Oli Solskjaer is technically the manager I will reinstall him as the manager before we we go through and the plan is what we're going to do is we're going to see how the club rebuilds um, because they're going to have an awful lot of money but they're going to have to repopulate the squad as you can see we have got six players left Phil Jones Jesse Lingard Marcus Rashford Luke Shaw Scott McTominay and Chris Smalling those are the players in the squad that I think given half a chance would see out their career at the club um Obviously, Marcus Rashford is a Manchester lad. Jesse Lingard from Warrington, but is a Man United fan. Um, Phil Jones and Chris Smalling have been there for, for nearly 10 years. Luke Shaw's been there for only about four now, but he's one of those that you think would be there forever. And obviously, McTominay is a youth prospect. So we'll show you the players that have gone out of the club. Um, as you can see, we have generated £670 million in transfer revenue. They're all the players that we've moved. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, if you do want to pause it and have a detailed look. Um, the headline one, I guess, Paul Pogba. Sent him to Real Madrid. Um, I was toying with the idea of sending him to Barcelona, but those links in real life have, have just stopped. They've just, you know, the last couple of summers he was in, he was potentially going to Barcelona. Now, because Zidane's there, although in this universe it's still Solari, um, Pogba's linked with Real Madrid, so I moved in there for 100 million. Um, the rest of them, I've tried to keep it fairly close to their in-game value, with a little bit added on, um, and basically this is what it means for their finances. So they've got 990 million in the bank and 647 million in the transfer kitty. The reason I've put myself in as the manager as well, I should just quickly explain is I tried it just with me being unemployed and going in and moving all these players around and it didn't add the finances to the club for some reason, bizarrely. So I had to put myself in as the manager to then get the money in the transfer kitty and in the bank balance so that we can um, go ahead with this experiment. So as I say, what we are going to do is we're going to sim through now until the day after the transfer window closes and we're going to see what they, um, who they buy, if they, re, you know, if they spend a load of money, if they don't. I will say I have done this uh, previously just to test it out, but on the vanilla release database, the one that come, came out with the game, um, and they only spent about 80 million in summer, but then they spent like 300 and something million in in January transfer window. So it could be interesting. So yeah, we'll, it's going to be in a few different little sections this first little bit. So it's going to be, as I say, up to the end of the summer window. Then we're going to do up until um, New Year's Eve. So we can see how they've got, a lot, got on in the first half of the season. Then we're going to do um, sim through to the 1st of Feb so that we can have a look back at January's transfer window and then sim through to the end of the season and see what difference they've made with the players they've brought in. So, first things first, I will um, resign myself and let's bring up Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Where is he? There he is. And it's putting back in charge of Mulder. That's bizarre. That really is bizarre because he isn't in charge of Mulder in real life. So we're going to put him back there. He is now the manager of Manchester United once again. Um, that is weird. 
That is really, really weird. Um, I'm just, yeah, strange. Right, so let's just double check. I think it's a, for the Premier League. Um, I believe it is. Let's have a quick, 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 quick look. The transfer window is, where is it? Where's the transfer window there? The 9th of August. So I'm going to sim through now till the 10th of August and we'll see who they've signed. Okay, so here we are on the 10th of August. So let's go in and let's see what Mr. Solskjaer and the board have done with their team. Um, they've they've got Captain of Benyat, uh, Phil Jones, their vice captain. Wow, Adrian Rabio is at the club. This could be interesting, couldn't it? So let's get straight into their transfer history then and see what they've done. And they have spent £239 million pounds already. So they signed Lee Grant from Stoke. He is a goalkeeper, I believe. Javi Varas has come in on a free. Uh, Benyat came in from Bilbao. Pedro Alcala from Girona. Alfred Finn Bogerson from Augsburg. Uh, Aaron Juan Bissaka, what a signing. Crystal Palace of 48 million. Um, Nikolai Boylison from Copenhagen. Adrian Rabio was 46 and a half. Federico Chiesa for 53. John Brooks as well, good solid centre back from um, Wolfsburg, uh, US international. Patrick Catrone from Milan, who they did sign in my test series as well. But I think he's the only. Oh, I think they signed Lee Grant as well in that save when I did it. Marcus Urente as well, and Kevin Mbabu. So a pretty decent looking. Uh, looking squad at the minute very very thin still but they do have quite a lot of good young players down in the uh, in the B team uh, in the under 23s and whatever they've got as well um, but it's a decent base they may struggle if they do get some injuries though because it's it's um it's a small squad to be doing a season with isn't it but that does what we should be able to do is have a look at how much money they've still got left they still have just under 400 million left in the transfer kitty. So I think January could be pretty big for them as well. But as a starting point, that isn't bad. So let's have a quick look at the schedule. Um, so we're going to go down now until uh, the New Year's Eve, basically. So they're going to have played all the way down. Their final game is against Arsenal. So who have they got to kick off? Fulham, Palace, Wolves, Bournemouth, Cardiff. Wow, five very, very winnable games. Obviously the Champions League. Then they've got Tottenham at home. Um, and then Southampton, a double header against the Merseysiders. West Ham, Burnley, Newcastle, my team, Huddersfield. So that's obviously a defeat. Um, for Man United, not for Huddersfield. Um, <laughs> Chelsea, Man City, Watford, Leicester, Fulham, Brighton and Arsenal. So yeah. I mean, Man United, the, just before we sim forward again now to New Year's Eve. Big, the biggest reason really for doing this with Man United is Man United always seem to be overpowered on FM. They always seem to just dominate. Um, and I just wanted to see if they still will, um, how long it will take them to, to rebuild and how long it will take them to win trophies. Looking at those signings they've made, if they bolster that in January as well, I think we could be seeing them back at the top of the Premier League within two to three seasons for sure but let's get to new year's eve and let's see how they've done in the first half of the season here we are then on new year's eve hope you have a lovely night tonight celebrating the new year um so yeah let's get through and see what has been happening um let's check out the premier division first let's have a look at the league table and we see manchester united seventh so they haven't had a terrible start um just past the halfway point, 20 games in, they're on 36 points, so they're only 9 points off City at the top, um, and it's very, very tight, isn't it? Uh, they've got a little gap down to 8th, and they are only 4 points off 2nd, so it's been pretty good in fairness. Um, so let's have a look at Manchester United then, um, and let us see who they've got going on now, now that... oh. So I simmed this and then just kind of like walked away, did other things, came back. Um, well, they haven't got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer anymore. That seems weird because they're doing quite well. We'll have a look at the schedule and everything. So Solskjaer got sacked on the 11th of December after 169 days. And they appointed Manuel Pellegrini, former Manchester City manager, of course, on Christmas Day. He's been in charge for six days 
I'm absolutely surprised. That sorry, little fly was just uh, flying past me. I'm absolutely surprised. I'm gobsmacked. They're seventh. They're not doing terribly. I mean, it's not like Manuel Pellegrini's come in and turned things around, is it? Because they are. They have. They've been doing all right. I mean, look at look at Dece He got sacked on the 11th of December, and then they've gone on and won four games since he went. So it's it's very 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 similar to what happened when Solskjaer took over. Um, that does surprise me. That really does surprise me that they've sacked him. But he has had a bad time. And, ah, ah, I think this might do it. I think they've gone out, haven't they? Yeah, they've finished third in their Champions League group. They've dropped into the Europa League. That is what's done for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed by that, has to be said. But um, Manuel Pellegrini, very, very good manager. Um, he's had two games in charge as well already and he has actually got two wins away at Brighton and at home against Arsenal so that's not too bad and then he's got a very very good January looking at that with Palace, Southampton, Wolves, Bournemouth and Cardiff his first really big test is Tottenham away on the 2nd of January and they are currently 6th um, so let's have a look then in terms of the players see who's been doing well for them so far before we then sim forward the plan will be now to go forward to the end of Jan uh, to the 1st of Feb um, and see if they've signed any more players. Um, so Jesse Lingard has made the most appearances. He's been on fire as well. Ten goals and six assists. Um, Adrian Rabiot's doing okay. Marcus Rashford is the top scorer, of course, with 11 goals so far. But, you know, they're not doing badly. Um, it does look like, if we just have a quick scout back to the table, let's just have a look at their progress. Um, so they were fourth at one point after match day seven. Um, so uh, Solskjaer got sacked. His last league game was the draw against Watford and they were eighth. So it must be just the fact that they've gone out of the Champions League that they've sacked him. That is really, really tough. I mean, they should have gone through that group with Monaco and Atletico, to be fair. So that's done for him. That really has, because he got sacked the day of that defeat uh, that final Champions League game. Um, but they've won four in a row since then. So it'll be really, really interesting to see how they carry on now. So let's just have a quick look um, at their finances. I know we just did this a second ago, but they do have just over 400 million still to spend. So it'll be interesting to see who they sign in January. 1st of February then, we're heading towards spring, hopefully out of winter a little bit. There's been four more games and it looks as though Man United have picked up a little bit, doesn't it? They've got eight points out of those four games, have moved up into sixth as well. Um, so let us go in and see how they've been getting on. Let's have a look at their transfer history. So it looks like they've been spending a little bit of money again. A uh, couple of major, major signings. So they've brought in this George Saunders from... Envigado, um, no idea who that is, absolutely no clue. Um, James Forrest from Celtic, that's a pretty good signing, I would say. Good, good winger he is. Um, Kalor Navas from Real Madrid, so they've addressed their goalkeeper issues, which is a big, big thing. Um, £45 million pounds they spent on him. And Florentino Luis from Benfica for £54 million. Um, he's a centre mid, have to be honest. I don't know a thing about him, never heard of him. Uh, 19 years of age, and if they spent 50 odd million on him, he must be good. So that's been a, a and both those two, they spent 100 million on deadline day. Um, so anybody gone? Um, no, just another loanee. Um, so they haven't sold anybody else. Um, let's have a look at their results then. How have they got on in January? Well, they're unbeaten. Um, they drew with Palace. They beat Southampton 4-1 away in the Cup. That's huge. Um, they've got a replay, though, against Sheffield Wednesday. They drew at Hillsborough. Um, so they play them at home in a few days' time. They've got Tottenham away coming up, of course. Um, Federico Chiesa is scoring some goals for them at the minute, isn't he? He must be troubling the top scorers now. Um, he is now up to 9. Patrick Catrone is on 10. Jesse Lingard is on 11. And Marcus Rashford is on 13. So they're spreading the goals around. Adrian Rabiot is getting a few from midfield as well. And it's starting to look as though they're turning things around a little bit. So before we go through to the end of this first season, let us see how much money they now have. So they now have £292 million in the bank for players. 
So they've still got a fair bit that they can spend. And of course, if they sell a few players as well, but that squad is now starting to look a little bit better, isn't it? If we put it into um, into the position order, Kalon Navas, I expect now will take the position. They've been switching between Javi Varas and Lee Grant. I imagine Kalon Navas will now take that role. Um, yeah, and it's starting to look a little bit better up there. It really, really is. That squad is starting to take shape nicely. End of the season then, and big news has Man City sack Pep Guardiola. Now that does surprise me. They were five points clear not in a little bit earlier, weren't they? So yeah, very, very strange. Let's have a look at the um at the Premier League table then first off, and let's see where um oh Arsenal. Arsenal won it. Manchester City finished second, two points behind. And they've sacked Guardiola. Anyway, this isn't a Man City episode, so it doesn't matter. Man United finished um, sixth, but a long, long way behind Liverpool. And Liverpool, they must have dropped like a stone as well. Let's just have a quick look at that. They were, they were top um, in February, and they've ended up finishing fifth. So I don't know if they've sacked um, Jurgen Klopp. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, Man City, unbelievably, have just... They were top there as well. And then look at that. They dropped to fourth and then ended up second. So that is very, very strange. So anyway, Manchester United, I'm guessing they just about stayed sixth all the way. They did. Um, let's have a look at their squad then. In fact, let's have a look at the schedule first. Let's see how they've done since um, since the end of January. So that first game wasn't against Tottenham um, away at Wembley. Um, yeah, I'm guessing... Uh, guessing Tottenham aren't in the new stadium in this in this save. Um, they don't seem to have done too badly. There's a little bad run here. Did they get to... Oh, they've got the Euro... Ah, we have a Europa League final to play as well. They are playing Chelsea in that after getting past Marseille and Leipzig and Arsenal and Besiktas. Um, yeah, I didn't actually realise they'd got to the Europa League final. So that'll be something we'll have a look Um what I'm going to do from now is we're going to go through. Let's just have a look and see if their transfer budget's altered. It shouldn't have done, I don't think. Uh, 295 million they've got to spend. So don't have they got any transfers? They've got Bernard Souza coming in. I'm guessing on the end of contract. Yeah. So they've got a free transfer coming in. Um, so the first season, then they they. Spent 345 million and brought in 670. They've got just under 300 million to go out in the summer as well. So it'll be interesting to see. So what I'm going to do now, um, we're going to cover the second season as well. But I'm just going to go forward to the end of the summer transfer window and see what business they've done. And then from then, we'll go all the way through the season and have a look as a whole. So we'll have a look at that Europa League final as well uh, very, very shortly. Ah, well, look at that. They won it. Manuel Pellegrini delivered a European trophy, albeit on penalties in Baki, wherever Baki is. I haven't got a clue. Olympic Stadium, where? Oh, Azerbaijan. Shouldn't that be Baku then? Um, Gonzalo Higuain had scored for Chelsea an equaliser late on, but it was 5 3 on penalties. Marcus Alonso missing the only one. Rabio, Forrest, Cutroni, Lingard, and Lewis scoring for United. So that was a very, very good end to their season. Um, right, let's have a look at their transfers for summer, shall we? And let's see. So they spent another 278 million and brought in another 24 million. And they, wow, they have, spent, they have signed a couple of amazing players here. They've brought in Isco from Real Madrid for 101 million. Wow. That is a huge transfer, but what a signing that is. They've also brought in Ryan Sessignon for £52 million from Fulham. We knew about Bernardo Souza. Um, Nicolo Barella from Cagliari as well. What a signing he is. He's a fabulous young player at the minute, getting a lot of attention in Italy at the minute. Dario Marisic from Sturm Graz is a centre-back and a very young one, so good potential signing for them. Diogo Jota, £53 million in from Wolves. Um, Samuel Gigo from uh, Spartak, he's a French centre-back. And Radislav Majewski, another goalkeeper. Um, right, OK, so let's see who's gone out here. Um, quite a few gone out on, a f on freeze. Nikolai Boylison has gone to Stoke. 
Pedro Alcala didn't do a lot last season, did he? Um, I'm not sure that he really made an impact at United after his move, but they've got a profit for him. So they've done something right. Um, who else has gone out? John Brooks has gone out, and so has Benyat as well. I'm surprised at Benyat. John Brooks has gone out after playing quite a few games as well. He's gone to Watford, um, so they've taken a little hit on him. Look at that. Three transfers in three seasons for John Brooks now. Um, and Benyat has gone to Ajax after a half-decent season. So again, another one that does surprise me. They've taken a huge hit on him. Um, letting him go for half what they paid for him. But some unbelievable signings that they have made. Um, it's still a fairly small squad. One thing I'm a little bit disappointed with is that they haven't promoted young players from the uh, youth team. I thought they might have done that. I'm a little bit disappointed with that. Um, but they've they've got another decent-looking squad. Um, it's a little bit short still, so I'm guessing they will have to use some... Um, some youth players. So let's see how they've been getting on. Um, they've played the Shawcross testimonial against Stoke and lost. Um, they lost to Borussia Dortmund as well, but they won a few other games. So they start at home to Tottenham. They've then got that European Super Cup against Atletico Madrid, who finally won the Champions League. Go on, Atleti. Well done. Um, and then Palace, West Ham, Wolves, Southampton, Stoke, Liverpool. So they've got a few winnable games early on up until that Liverpool one. Between the Tottenham and the Liverpool games, they've got a lot of winnable matches. But we're not going to worry about that now. What we're going to do is we're going to go through all the way to the end of this season rather than break it down. Um, and we'll have a look um, at first at their January transfers and then how they've got on in the season. So, um, yeah, let's, um, let's fast forward a year. And here we are on the 11th of May 2020. I can't wait to see what's happened this season. Can't wait to see if they strengthened any more in the January window. So, yeah, as I said, we will go and have a look now at the their, um, their January transfer business and then we'll have a look at their, um, their season as a whole. So I don't want to look at anything. I um, don't want to see where they ended up. Um, and I... Uh, they didn't sign anybody. Okay. Didn't sign a single player in January. That's um, not surprising, I guess, because they they had a big old blowout, didn't they? Um, players that went out, just a few players on loan. Finn Bogerson, Angel Gomez, Mason Greenwood. Scott McTominay went out on loan. Strange. I thought he would have been playing. Um, so, they, as we can see at the top there, they finish sixth in the English Premier Division again. That is, let's just have a quick look then. So they finished sixth this time with 57 points. Last season it was fifth, but with 63. So they've actually gone down a little bit, haven't they? Um, but okay, so they've got Europa League. I thought they would have been higher up than this by now. Liverpool are champions. Um, so if you don't win it this season, Liverpool fans, don't worry. You're going to win it in 2020. Never fear. 96 points. Eight points clear of Arsenal. Man City down in third. Um, uh, I'm, I'm surprised because the whole point of this was to see how long it takes Man United to get back on track. And now, of course, they won the Europa League uh, last season. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how they got on against Atletico as well. We'll have a look at that now. Um, but yeah, normally Man United are overpowered, aren't they? They, they normally just win everything and they're just unbeatable in FM. So it's really surprising that they haven't managed to turn themselves around just yet. Um, so let's have a look at their schedule. So they had, um, they lost at home 2-0 to Tottenham on the first day of the season. Then they lost the European Super Cup to uh, Atletico Madrid in the um, that stadium there, which I'm guessing is in Turkey. Uh, Jelson Martins and Thomas Lamar scored for Atletico. Jesse Lingard had scored for United. Um, they didn't win a game until the West Ham match. It wasn't a very good start, was it? It was fairly patchy. Got a couple of wins back-to-back -back there in the Premier League and then the Champions League. Um, did they get through their Champions League group? Yes, they did. They finished second behind Valencia. Wow, that is a group, isn't it? Dortmund, Napoli and Valencia, along with Man United. That is a hell of a group. Um, they got through in the Carabao Cup. Who ended up winning that? Um, Liverpool, okay, so that's interesting, Liverpool beat Tottenham in the final of the Carabao Cup, how far did, how far then did 
Man United getting that. Let's just have a little scroll down. They got through the quarterfinal against Everton and they lost to Tottenham. They lost to Tottenham in the semi-final. FA Cup third round, they drew at Swansea and then beat them in the replay. Um, they drew at home to Man City and then lost 2-0 away in the replay. So who just who won the FA Cup? Wolves. Ah, interesting. Wolves won the FA Cup. So Liverpool won the League and the League Cup. And um, yeah, and Wolves won the FA Cup. So let's see how they got on in the Champions League. We need to get through to February here, don't we? So they had Juventus and they lost 2-1 at home in the first leg and then went and won 2-0 in Turin to go through. That's outrageous. Um, and then, oh, then they got beaten home and away. Absolutely smashed at home. Look at that. They got done 4-1 at home. Oh, and Adnan Yanezai, former Manchester United player. What is he doing at Tottenham? Got two goals in that game. And they lost 2-1 then at, um, at Wembley. Oh, no, they're in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium at this point. Um, so a very disappointing season for Manchester United. They didn't win a trophy. They only finished sixth again in the league and with less points than last season. And Champions League quarter-final, I guess, is OK after winning the Europa League, but they lost the European Super Cup. Um, they lost in the semi-final of the um, Carabao Cup. Um, they lost on penalties, actually. Look, they... Didn't they? I didn't see that. They lost 1-0 at home. Again, their home record. Awful. Lost 1-0 at home and then won 2-1 away but went out on penalties. So, you know, they don't have in the semi-final, do they? They don't have away goals, which is a bit galling because they would have gone through. Um, but yeah, a very disappointing season. The one thing I didn't notice was who is their manager. Um, it's Antonio Conte. So we'll just finish by bringing up their... their um, their managerial history. So we went through it a little bit, didn't we? They they got rid of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer pretty quickly, only 169 days. Manuel Pellegrini managed to do over a year, and Antonio Conte is now in there and has only been there for a couple of months. He came in in March. So that's it for this episode. Um, I do plan to do one now to look at the next three seasons, but what I would do is I would just probably have a look at the summer transfers and then go all the way through to the end of the season, a bit like we did with this season, and just do that. So I'm aware that this video is probably going to be pushing uh, pushing the half hour mark. Um, so episode two will only be um, a, it, probably about half as long, hopefully, just to look at the three seasons and see if they can actually get themselves up to the top of the league because it's not going exactly how I thought it would be. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. Something different to the channel. It's something I've been wanting to do for ages. I wanted to do it on FM18. Kind of run out of time with the game. Um, but if you enjoy this, then it will be something that I'll look to do um, a bit more. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Remember to jump in the comments and let me know what you think of it, um, of the idea as a whole, and how you think Man United will get on in the next three seasons. And are you surprised that they're still lagging behind? Because their squad is pretty good in all fairness it's not a bad squad at all um but yeah remember to smash that like button guys as well subscribe and turn on those notifications and i really again thank you very much for watching i'll see you very soon bye bye